because he'll not have any other income, what will happen is that will generally become a tax-free income for him, um, uh, you know, as such. So that's one other thing which you could do. And the the last allocation of about say another 20 or percent, I would say, is to do into MIPs. You know, so they give you a five, ten kind of a percent exposure to equities. But if you do that and if you start uh, activating a systematic withdrawal plan from there, it will help you to supplement your monthly income as well. So putting all these things together, I think this could uh, you know, give you a well-balanced composite uh, you know, retirement plan for the next 15, 20 odd years. Right, thanks for that. We've got an email now. Samir Rana from Surat has sent us this email. He has invested in mutual funds, PPF, post office scheme, shares and term plan. On top of all these, he wants to invest 1 to 2 lakh rupees more. Which is the best option for him? Has he left out anything at all? Um, not really. But what he can do, or what I would think is, um, why do a post office recurring kind of a scheme? I mean, he can get an 8% in alternative schemes. See, he's young. He needs to have flexibility with his money, and he needs to be having enough liquid money by which he can take an opportunity. So the best investment strategy for a person like Samir, 35 years of age, should be that the money should be investment uh, invested in a high growth oriented investment at the same time which can be liquidated so as long as there's no other alternative opportunity available let it keep growing as soon as there's another opportunity available you know liquidate and take advantage of that so i'd say maybe a post office deposit is not such a good idea i don't know if he's considered uh, equity link saving schemes a beautiful instrument on a long term basis so that's something what about that some pension plans as well? and and uh, he needs to also look at his uh, you know retirement in terms of uh, pension plans from mutual funds he can also look at unit linked insurance plans you know which are pension uh, based plans so a composite mix of all this should be a good investment strategy for someone who's young and you know can have a lot of dynamic risk uh, taking ability in his life right well time for a break now Karthik Zaveri will stay on to answer more of your queries we'll be back after this very short break Welcome back. You're watching Your Money with Karthik Zaveri and we are discussing investment strategies. Let's go across now to Amritsar. We've got Mayank Kapoor from there. Mayank, uh, you're 23 years old. What have you done with your money so far? Um, yeah, actually, I've just uh, finished my post-graduation. I've done MBA. Okay. And uh, I just started making a bit of portfolio for me. Very good. And uh, till date, I have 34 shares of PNB at the rate 390, which were in, under the IPO. Okay. Uh, then I got some uh, around 50 shares of OBC at the rate 250. Right. Uh, then I'd invested a bit of money in mutual funds, which okay. would be in HSBC mid cap mm -hmm. um, and SBI uh, mid cap magnum fund and HTFC multi cap fund. Okay. And uh, the recently I have uh, put an application for ICICI blended plans. Okay. For 5,000. Right. So, um, being a new investor and just a bit of portfolio uh, of around 30 to 40,000 bucks okay. at the moment and uh, till now my investments have been good, uh, leaving beside the PNB investment which uh, mm -hmm. currently is around 80 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to know how to go about my investments in the future uh, uh -huh. so that uh, till now uh, in the SBI mutual fund I have a good return, it's around 11 rupees at the moment. Mm -hmm. which may, which makes my 600 units within a month to 6600 6, rupees which is a good interest right so uh, in the future how much I'd money do you have right now further to invest at this point um i have around uh, say 40000 more bucks with me okay which you've, you've I can done invest. well you've done well for yourself at 23 i must say you've uh, not just earned money well but you've also been investing it very well but let me get karthik in here to give you a slightly more longer term picture of what you should do with your money well, I think he's on the right track. He's looking at equities. Much, he's yes. going through the IPO route. He's going through the mutual fund route. But I think just a couple of things mm -hmm. that you may like to tell him about the kind of time frame that he should look at. Uh, sure. I don't think he should be looking at a one-month return sure. Uh, sure. and justifying his investment in a mutual fund. I think that's a much more longer-term thing. But well, if you were to do his financial plan, uh, he says he's got 40,000 now, but I'd like to take it a step forward and you could even tell him that, look, even the additional money that you earn over the next three, four years, this is what you should really do with it. Sure. Um, hi, Mayank. I think you're doing very well in terms of whatever you've done already. Uh, you've chosen some mid-cap funds, you've chosen some growth-oriented funds, which is a good decision and you've been doing pretty well. Uh, one of the things I want to tell you is out of this 30, 40, 50 or 1000 that you have right now is consider a little bit of retirement planning. You're young. Um, I think you're very well aware of the returns that are available from mutual fund investments and equity investing. 
it will help you very much in the long run. So deploy a little bit of your money, say about 25% of your money right now towards retirement. It will help you, you know, grow and it will help you build your wealth. Um, while you're looking at all the other investments that you have besides your PNB investment, all these investments, I mean, assume that these investments are at least for five years if you want to really see a lot of wealth growth because no equity investment really is um, an investment which happens for less than you know two years or three years. So the longer your investment is, the larger your tree will grow and the better your money will perform over a period of time. But like you're doing, keep watching your portfolio, keep monitoring it at the same time. Uh, focus on mid-cap for the next four or five years. Focus on dividend yield stocks. Focus on you know India growth-oriented story. I mean, those kind of funds. Um, I'd say avoid uh, funds that are only focused on one or two sectors, which is which may not be a very good idea because you know you may not really realize when the sector turns around. But um, otherwise, being on diversified side and some mid cap side, I think you'll do very I well. I think he's a little too heavy on the just the mid cap funds. Yes. You may buy a few more diversified equity funds. Absolutely, yes. Right? So some diversified funds, some dividend yield portfolios also will give him a well-rounded exposure across uh, the stock market. And then, as I said, a little bit of contribution and towards retirement. He can himself a good term insurance plan because he's young, he'll get cheap. Yeah, I mean, as soon as the responsibility, um, but I mean, as soon as the responsibility comes mm -hmm. upon him, maybe that's the right time to buy something, maybe not immediately. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, time's not really running out. I think if, if he gets married in a couple of years with responsibility, with some debt and all that, then insurance would be a very well justified call. Right, thanks for that, uh, Karthik. And let's get across to Patiala now, where we've got our next caller, Jagjit Sharma from uh, Jagjit. Uh, welcome to Your Money. Tell us uh, what would you like to know today, sir. Uh, I'm age 65 or above. Yes, sir. Rather, right. Tell us, sir. Now I have uh, uh, enough uh, money to. Uh, I have invested in senior citizens. Ji. And my now my question is how, how can I uh, uh, invest safely? I don't want to go to mutual funds because right. I have seen their ups and downs every year, many times. I am in the equity market for the last 20 years. Okay, that's great experience. So without that, what should I do with my 1 lakh of money? I am earning at present 250 or above. 2 lakh 50,000 a year? Yeah. That's what you are earning, sir. Okay. Sir, the uh, Kanaj Mishra is from, uh, something unjustified for the our senior citizens. Mm -hmm. He has deprived us of many things. Now we have uh, to invest uh, somewhere as our pension scheme or some uh, something which is far uh, of uh, our age. Okay, what that's a I good do? that's a good question, Mr. Sharma. Thank you very much for asking your question on air here, and I think you raised some very important points there. But tell us, uh, Karthik. He says he earns two and a half lakh with all his savings, so he obviously saved well in his life, and he's uh, earning this money today. He finds sure. that except for the nine percent senior citizen. Uh, instrument that he puts his money in and that also doesn't give him a monthly return in that sense. Uh, where else can he invest so that he also keeps himself? Um, Mr. Sharma, you know what happens is I know that a lot of things have changed and tax reforms have not been extremely encouraging towards the senior citizen in that sense uh, from your perspective. But however, having said this, you know, one, you said that you were a little risk averse towards uh, mutual fund investments. Now, what I would r want to suggest to you is that the strategy or the methodology must change a little bit, right? You can go to a mutual fund, you can go to MIPs, you can go to a, you know, 5%, 10% equity exposure kind of a thing. See, because there is nothing else which will even even match inflation at your age. Whether you buy an insurance annuity from an insurance company, if that was available, or any other bond product, it will it will not match inflation. It will not give you more than six percent or seven percent in that sense. Now, if you have to do anything better than that, then this is the only available alternative, as in um, you know within the investment arena today. Uh, go into that. Change your methodology. Instead of expecting a monthly dividend, look at getting a systematic withdrawal plan. So what happens is over a period of time, you are withdrawing small amounts depending on your need and requirement. You are assured of your income. And over a period of time, because majority of your portfolio will be bond portfolio or a fixed uh, so to say, fixed interest income portfolio, you will not be exposed so much to the vagaries of the market and it will not really move so much up and down. A 5-10% uh, equity exposure will actually help you to beat inflation or match inflation at least. So I think that would be the most rational thing to do given the circumstances and what we have available with us today. So I think an SV, SWP plan with a mutual How fund. How does it work? Very quickly. Um, what happens is you make your investment and then you instruct like the way you do an SIP is the reverse of SIP. So I so put a lump sum with the mutual fund, fund and, and then Keep yeah, exactly. It and and then I keep space. telling the mutual fund that give me 2,000 rupees every month. So every month, units equivalent to 2,000 get sold. So over a period of time, my portfolio is also generating. And where does this money lie? Where does it get invested? The money could uh, get invested depending on the scheme that you choose. Scheme is of uh, the investor's uh, uh, choice. Yes, absolutely. So, and where you can choose how much equity exposure would you want to have 
ten percent, twenty percent, five percent. I mean, there is everything which is really available. Even as zero percent is available. So you can. There's lots of products, lots of variety. You can really choose what you want to do. My suggestion would be five to ten percent is a fair thing to do. So it'll you know help you you know uh, stabilize your returns. It'll also help you hedge against uh, you know interest rate movements and where you might lose actually on a debt fund. So given all these circumstances, I think it's a fair strategy to do a you know on a ten percent MIP kind of a plan. Go to a growth option. Do a systematic withdrawal plan. Choose the amount that you like. Don't choose a very high amount because otherwise your funds will you know start eroding very fast. But choose a reasonable two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, whatever is you know suitable and comfortable to you on a monthly basis. Right. Thanks for that, uh, Karthik. Time for a break now. Karthik Zaveri will stay on to answer more of your queries. We'll be back in just a moment. Let's also remind you that tomorrow our expert will answer all your queries on investing in unit linked insurance plans or ULIPs. Do send in your queries and we'll call you back. Welcome back. You're watching Your Money with Karthik Zaveri, and we're discussing investment strategies from Mumbai. Now we have our next caller, Sanjay Balgopal. And Sanjay, welcome to the show. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Sanjay. What's your question today? Yeah. Uh, see, hi. I have basically my investments are in equities, mutual funds, okay, and insurance. All right. Now I wanted to make investment of around fifty to fifty-five thousand. Mm hmm. So every year. So right. whether I should go for some, uh, which segment should I look out for? Whether Okay, now if you were to give us a percentage of uh, all these investments, how much of it is in equity? How much of it is in a mutual fund? How much of it is in insurance? Can you give us a? Uh, you can say around fifteen, fifteen, ten, and uh, ten. Can say that. Fifteen, ten, and ten. This is in terms of thousands or percentage. Percentage. So that still leaves you with the rest sixty-five percent. What have you done with that? It's around fifteen. I told you, fifteen plus ten, twenty, twenty-five plus ten, thirty-five percent. Around thirty-five percent. All right. Okay. So Karthik, that's his uh, investment so far. Now sure. he obviously wants to invest fifty thousand every year, which I think is a damn good thing to do. Yep. Uh, where should he really be focusing on to build his wealth for the future? Um, Sanjay, hi. Very straightforward. Um, what I would say is, if you are looking at any instruments, firstly, I mean, let's remove the ones that we should not consider, and then we'll come to the ones that we should consider. So, if you look at things like PPF, if you look like uh, things like post office, etc., over a period of time, all of these are going to become taxable. PPF is going to become taxable, you know, very shortly once the EET regime sets in. But there's no clarity on that. There's no clarity on that, but it's going to happen. So, once you withdraw the money in future, you're going to pay some tax on that. So what I would say is again coming to the fact that you're basically young. I think you should look at you know opportunities that are dynamic and opportunities that will give you a, a chance to improve your wealth over a long period of time. I would say look at pension plans. You look at unit linked plans. Look at pension plans from mutual funds, by the way. Uh, look at unit linked plans. Look at ELSS. And that's a beautiful instrument. Or I mean, over a you know across a whole diversified um, um, shall we say area of mutual funds. These ELSS schemes have done fantastically well over the last four to five years. Now, having said that, they also give you benefit in terms of your tax advantages if you need to take those. And all your investment is essentially tax-free, and that's probably the only vehicle which is going to remain, which will be on a long-term tax-free basis. So that's a great idea. That's a great opportunity that you must consider, and uh, you know, regularly invest into those instruments. Don't invest in a lump sum. Go short. I mean, you know, go, go small piece by piece. Maybe on a monthly basis you could deploy something. Don't put all the fifty thousand at one stroke. Okay. I mean, just spread your risk a little bit across the year. Have a slow and steady approach, but, and keep it. Keep in mind that you're going to invest for a. Period of four years, ten years, fifteen years. I mean, you know, that's really how wealth will grow over a period of time. What you're really saying is that at that young age, uh, everybody must have a fairly decent exposure so to, to equities, equity, provided absolutely. you're willing to look at it for five to ten years. Minimum, yes. Minimum, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the way wealth grows. Thank you very much, Karthik, for joining us today. Pleasure. That's all we have on today's show. Do tune in to Your Money Monday to Friday, Ultimate Guide to Savings and Investment.